Welcome to M Talks from M House. Meet the innovators in the Web3 and NFT space. We're still early, but there's no time to waste. Let's get started. Today, we have a true innovator in a very unique area of the generative art space. Matt Jacobson is founder of Plotables, and Plotables is a curated on chain generative art platform. It is a place for generative artists working with pen plotters to share their work with a larger community. Artblocks founder Eric Calderon said Plotables was leading the way in the area of generative manufacturing. So we are very excited for this M Talk, and I'd like to uh, extend a very warm M House welcome to Matt Jacobson. Uh, welcome, Matt. Hello. Thanks for doing this. Thanks so much for having me. Do you want to tell us uh, a little bit? So we, we've we've learned a little bit about Plotables. Do you want to give us a little brief introduction t- uh, to you and your background, maybe yeah. before Plotables and how you got into it? So I started uh, as an artist. Um, I, I picked up creative coding uh, maybe eight years ago. Um, it was always a hobby, um, more of a side thing that I did for fun. Uh, it, my my day job was uh, working as a data scientist, um, and I learned a lot doing that. Um, but uh, I was always very passionate about making making art with code. And um, uh, recently, I found out about NFTs and specifically art blocks, and um, developed some projects there and uh, released um, released two projects on the platform. Uh, one curated project called Watercolor Dreams, and another project in the um, in the uh, playground called Blasky Ballet. Um, on for my art I go by numbers in motion um, so you can find me uh, through that but um, yeah through talking with with Eric a bit um, I, I realized they were doing this thing called powered by art blocks uh, which mm-hmm. uh, is this platform they have to allow people to create um, their own customized platforms similar to our blocks. Um, and that's how Plotables was born. When you got into generative art, uh, did you get into immediately into um, a plotter art or was, was, that, a, was that a journey? Uh, it was definitely a journey. Um, I started off with processing and P5.js, uh, just like watching uh, YouTube videos and tutorials on like how to do these things. Um, but after playing with it for a while, um, it seemed like there was something missing. Um, it, it was, it was a little boring just staring at the screen the whole time. I mean, that's what I do in my day job and it felt a little tiring to, to just keep doing that at night after I clocked out of work. Um, so I started looking for ways to use this expression physically. And uh, I came across pen plotters, and uh, there was a great community of people on Twitter and Instagram um, posting their works. And I was super inspired, and and went out and got a pen plotter, and stumbled my way through uh, figuring out how to make it work. That's very really interesting because I've seen several videos recently, including the one I think it could have been from you in the last week or two of uh, a chromy squiggle being plotted. Um, and and that and the other videos I've seen, they're they're quite mesmerizing uh, to watch. Yeah. Uh, it's quite interesting. So you have the artistic twist and the the robotic precision, mm-hmm. and it seems to. Uh, it, it, I, I saw a quote somewhere, and somebody said it, it sits at the boundary of physical and digital worlds, which which I think it does. But it's it's. What do you think is is the attraction? There's many things that that make it attractive, at least to me. Um, First and foremost, the physicality, um, being able to bring something off the screen and into the physical world and be able to touch it and, and feel it and, and uh, watch it be created in front of your eyes and be able to put it up on your wall afterwards is is huge to me. Um, but beyond that, um, there's also this sort of introduction. Um, you know, everything's so cold and calculated on the computer screen. But once you start bringing it into the real world, uh, things don't always go according to plan. You know, sometimes maybe uh, you have a pen plotter and, and it's going along doing its thing, and for whatever reason the pen uh, has a, a hiccup or something, and it, it misses a little piece of a line or some ink bleeds out onto uh, a portion of the paper a little more than 
uh, than the other parts of the paper. And so, especially for generative art, it adds this whole other layer of, of randomness to, uh, to the output, um, something that uh, you don't have control over, like you do uh, with generative art in the code. That's a good point. Yeah, so generative art, I guess that's 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 rendered on you know within within the, the confines of a of a computer or a screen, is pretty much always I guess going to be be the same. The only variable could be the the type of screen used, but uh, it's interesting. And I like pl uh, plotters uh, are not something that I was very familiar with, but I did a bit of research uh, prior to speaking to you, and it was quite interesting because I, I learned uh, that that you know a lot of the thought that goes into these. Uh, is around which pens to use and the type mm -hmm. of pens and do you use pencils and how pencils wear down and then you need to sharpen them and then adjust them so that they're the same height and then I even came across people using paint and paint brushes and how they can build into the code to to instruct the the plotter to go back and re 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 ink itself I was going to say re you know re dip in the paint or yeah, it could yeah. be done manually so you you get this like like you said this I guess kind of organic um, element to it as well. Absolutely. And you, you know, you're talking about just that um, moment, I guess, of bringing that out of the computer and onto something physical. And you know, I just remember being a kid, and I think my first computer was like an Apple II C. Then I just remember being about, I don't know, thirteen or fourteen, and getting a printer, and just being amazed. And that same thing. I, and it was actually that's the first time I heard of plotters because I was like, oh, I wanted to get a printer. And you know there were different types of printers. Then I was like, "What is this thing called?" A, you know those dot matrix back then, yeah. and there were daisy wheels. I think then back then, and then there was this thing called a plotter. And I was like, "What is that?" So I, I kind of learned what a plotter was then, but yeah. never thought about it too much since. But I do remember that first moment of printing something out. I have no idea what it was, but just having that thing become physical on paper and ink um, was amazing. So I can imagine if you spend a lot of time as you have done, I'm sure coded this and creating these artworks to have those come out as physical must be, must be quite amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. During my research, I came across um, Tyler Hobbs name uh, quite a bit. Uh, he's obviously quite famous. I think we could say in uh, blockchain art, um, NFT circles these days. And it was interesting to see that um, he's been working on plotter scripts for quite some time. Um, his name came up a lot, and little pieces of code that he had created uh, were referenced uh, a lot. Um, and if I, I think maybe the the paintbrush uh, that I, I mentioned earlier, uh, I think it was um, something that he was uh, discussing as well, the challenges of uh, using paintbrushes. So uh, he's been doing that. Is there much um, more um, crossover there? I mean, are there other people that we might recognized from the generative art uh, field that, that are um, working with plotters as well? 100%. I would say uh, a large majority of the people that, that you're familiar with uh, in terms of on-chain generative art um, have at least explored, if not like directly used pen plotters in the past. I know for a fact, I mean, Dimitri, uh, I'm going to butcher his name, but Ch Cherniak, um, that sounds uh, good to me, but I'm not expert. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, I know he uses pen plotters and has used pen plotters in the past. Um, mm. Rev Dan Cat, um, who has done a few releases on Art Blocks, uh, is also a, a, a. He started with pen plotters and, and uh, is probably going back to pen plotters um, these days. Um, also, uh, Jorge, I don't recall his last name, but he goes by Z Jorge on, on Art Blocks. Um, he uses pen plotters a lot. Um, I don't know if, if you're familiar with art blocks that much, but um, they had a, an event last year in Marfa at their sort of headquarters. Yep. And uh, Jorge brought his pen plotter uh, to the event and was was doing some live pen plotting. Um, at that point, there was no connection to NFTs. That he was he was just having fun with the pen plotter and, and generative art. The, the community is huge, even outside of the NFT space. If you go on Twitter and just look at the plotter Twitter hashtag, um, you'll find thousands and thousands and thousands of people uh, making really really great work. Fantastic. So there's there's crypto Twitter and there's plotter Twitter. We've just realized. <laughs> Really, really good to know. So you 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 said outside of um, is, yeah. So it, it sounds like there it's it's more who isn't working with plotters than yeah than <laughs> than who is. 
Absolutely. Um, okay. Um, uh, just out of interest, if if you take, you know, we're just up at Tyler, and I, I, you know, I guess if we look at Fidenzas, for example, I mean, okay, they're not, they're not lines, but it, it, could you could you take anything that that works with lines and um, uh, you know, input that output that sorry with with a plotter? So the main thing that you need to do to communicate with a plotter is to make sure that the output is an SVG. An SVG, um, as opposed to like a JPEG, which which is just pixel based, like this pixel is this color, this pixel is this color. An SVG, on the other hand, um, literally stores the geometry in the file. Um, like if you go and open up an SVG file in a text editor, you'll see um, long lists of X, Y positions. And, and those are, those are points that define a line, a curve. Um, so that's all you need to do to communicate with a modern day pin plotter, um, create an SVG. So I know uh, Dimitri's work, uh, even on Artblocks, has been uh, all SVG based. Um, I'm sure Tyler's work is all SVG based too. Um, the one caveat with that is um, filling filling shapes is hard. So so if you have like a square, um, it's very easy to draw the outline. But if you want to fill it, um, you don't get that automatically for free. You need to plan like a, a hatching algorithm or something to to actually fill it. Okay, because it it just works with lines, so you would need. Exactly. Infinite, to, potentially a number of lines inside a certain space. Uh, yeah, either like fill it with lines or you can fill yeah. it with dots if you want to do shading. Dots, good. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if that's a good question, but maybe it is. How big is the market? Um, I guess we're looking at, you know, thinking specifically blockchain and NFTs, um, um, plotter market. And, and are there, you obviously have a marketplace called Plottables, right? Uh, Plottables.io, I believe. Mm -hmm. yep. And are there other marketplaces uh, for, for plotter art? That's a good question. Um, Blockchain based, I should say, Plutter Art. Yeah. So the only other, uh, it's not. It was not really even a platform, but um, it was more of a project release or or an exhibition on another platform um, that I've seen that is dedicated to pen plotters. Was um, an exhibition on Feral File. If you're familiar with that, um, they did an exhibition, a, a quote unquote exhibition uh, called Graph where I think they got maybe six or seven artists to release um, release generative artwork uh, where the output was SVGs and was intended to be plotted. And furthermore, with that, um, when you bought the NFT, you were entitled to a physical uh, plot uh, directly from the artist. So so the artist would, um, would sell their NFT and then they would get the address information and, and go through making the plot with their pen plotter and then ship that to the the purchaser. You mentioned you know pre NFTs that there was quite a large plotter art uh, industry, and there still is, right? Like a non NFT, non blockchain um, industry. How do you think it has has it changed? And if so, how has it changed? Do you think since NFTs became such a big thing? I guess over the last let's say year or two, when when blockchain art really exploded. Mm -hmm. For the plotter community specifically, I don't think it's changed a lot, honestly, because um, these artists, while they can sort of make generative art NFTs with their normal workflow, um, there's always been this disconnect from the plotter and the piece of art. Um, they, the, the focus has never been the plot. It's always been the NFT. And so with plottables, I'm trying to um, sort of rethink that process and, and really make the plot first. Um, and in that process, I'm hoping to encourage a lot of people that wouldn't have thought to bring their work to the NFT space um, in, into the uh, into the space. Okay, fantastic. And how, how is that going? I mean, are you seeing, you know, are, is that resonating with people? Are you seeing an uptake? Is there is it growing? Absolutely, yeah. So we've gotten uh, quite a few applications. Um, right now, we're on a pretty good, um, like one week, uh, one project per week uh, flow. Um, and yeah, we're getting some really great artists who uh, maybe have been interested in the NFT space, but 
haven't really found a, a home for themselves or, or a place where they feel comfortable releasing the art. So um, yeah, we, we've had some really great projects uh, from um, from people who have been working with plotters for years and from a few people who maybe just started working with pen plotters less than six months ago. And it's been really encouraging to see um, the different ways people can approach the pen plotter uh, and the work that's made for it. Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, I heard that there's uh, somebody mentioned that there was quite a steep learning curve uh, with plotters. Is is that the case? How how hard is it to to get into plotting? Yeah, you know, it's 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 really easy to make to make bad plots <laughs> uh, when you're starting out. Um, there's just like a few quirks that you have to learn. You have to learn like how to place the pen and how to align the paper with your pen plotter so that. Uh, the the final plot, you know, doesn't look crooked uh, with respect to the the, the edges of the paper, um, and uh, like lining up different pins if you're trying to do different color layers on a piece, um, and even down to like which pins you want to work with or which papers you want to work with. Um, these aren't like these aren't things that you need to like figure out to, to start plotting immediately. These are sort of things you figure out along the way. And it's, it's really just like, how do I make this look the best I can? Yeah. It's, it's not that, you know, if you use the wrong paper uh, for your first plot, it's going to look terrible. Um, it just might look a little better if you use like a higher quality paper or something. Um, or maybe if you use a fountain pen, um, you can get some more subtleties in the color of the ink. Uh, things like that. I wouldn't say it's a steep learning curve. Um, I would just say there's a lot of little things to learn, um, and nothing nothing that's like a roadblock that that you know will make it so you try pin plotting once and uh, it's you just realize it's not for you and it's just too hard. I, I don't think there's anything like that. I could tell from the way you're speaking that I, I guess you you cross into different disciplines like you know pen penmanship and types of pens and and things like that, and also. Uh, yeah, you're talking about colors. So is it true that then that if you want to have different colors that you need to, I, I suppose it depends on the plotter, but typically you need to replace the pen? And, yeah. 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 Um, so I think the the standard like modern day pen plotter that you'll find most everybody uses is called an axi draw. Mm -hmm. um, and with the axi draw, it's set up in such a way where you can pretty much put any type of pen you want in. You could put um, a, a fountain pen and you could angle it so that it's, you know, um, at a 45 degree angle and touching the paper in the right way. Or you can uh, put in a giant Sharpie that's like, uh, you know, uh, an inch thick. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah. So if you want to do different colors, um, you have to sort of uh, plot, plot everything you want in one color, switch out the pen, uh, put in the new color and then continue your plot from there. Um, it's it's not complicated. You just have to make sure that uh, the new pin lines up with the old pin, because otherwise uh, things look a little off. I can picture that. I can yeah. picture that. Okay. And who are the uh, who are the main buyers? Would you say at the moment? I'm sure it varies, but uh, I, I guess what I'm wondering is who buys plotter art? Are, are they plotter owners or not? Do people buy the plotter art to print? Is that the correct uh, to plot? I guess themselves or yeah, um, or are they um, are, are they just happy to to receive the plots from somebody else, or just happy to receive the files? You know, I, I think we've seen all, all over the board. Um, yeah. Uh, certainly, there's people there that are just interested in the NFT aspect of it. Um, but I think the more vocal people, at least in in our Discord community. Um, have been the ones that have uh, come over, you, mostly from like the art block side, because there's this like um, uh, small association with art blocks. Um, there's been a lot of people coming over from art blocks and just being interested in, in what it is, and, and even a few of them have taken the leap into to actually buying a pen plotter and uh, starting a journey on like figuring all these things out that I just mentioned. Um, so we have, uh, I can think of like two or three off the top of my head that have, have bought a pen plotter for the first time. And, and these, these aren't artists. These are, these are collectors that, that are just, they're interested in, in 
maybe even taking part in the process of, of creating the art. Um, so they bought a pin plotter and they've, uh, they've started plotting all of their plottable NFTs and um, they're just having like a lot of fun experimenting with it, like using different colors uh, for the different layers of, of the NFT. And, um, you know, I think even, even one person plotted two NFTs on top of each other. So there was like this, this new piece of work made from, from two separate NFTs. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's been the, the the most encouraging thing to see is is these these people that um, have really embraced the platform and, and what it's sort of encouraging. I mean, I, I have to say, since researching this, it's crossed my mind because, as I mentioned earlier, I actually remember that feeling when I was a kid of printing my name or whatever it was out on a piece of paper and just seeing something digital turn into something physical. It's like it, it really there there is a moment there where you're like, oh, okay. And MHAS, we are uh, opening a uh, physical um, blockchain art NFT gallery uh, in Amsterdam, in the center of Amsterdam, the museum district. And I was actually thinking yesterday, it could be just a really nice, just fun thing to have in there would would actually be a, a pen plotter, just that people could, you know, press plot <laughs> or whatever, and, and then just, just see these pieces of art come That's in. Up. Really. to physical reality in front of their eyes. I think that could be that could be just quite a nice addition. I, I love that idea. And, and that's something I've actually been thinking about a lot um, with Plottables having, having some sort of um, live in-person event where people can uh, come. We'll have maybe 10 pin plotters set up. Uh, you can mint your NFT right there and then uh, just plug your computer into a pin plotter and maybe you can choose the pens or the color paper you want and you can leave with 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 a physical pen plot of your nft that you you purchased um i i'm it's been it's been a dream since since the the inception of plottables so uh I, it'll, it'll happen at some point i just don't know when my understanding is that uh the the, the plotters you mentioned earlier i think it was an axi draw i've seen that mentioned many places uh it seems to be the kind of you know not not entry level but like you know good quality standard Th those are relatively affordable i think for 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 most people right? we're talking a few hundred dollars maybe in that region so the 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 base version that i would recommend i think is around 500 i want to say maybe 600 okay. um but they have bigger versions um i think they have all the way up to like an a1 size that's like thirteen hundred dollars um but they also have like a mini a super mini one like a like the size of, of a postcard um that goes for like 300 i think yeah okay i'm excited about that now actually because i all the time that we're planning this 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 exhibition i'm just you know i really want to make it interesting for people and show them the history of blockchain art but also to where we can just make it really tangible and i think this is probably I don't know, potentially the, one of the most tangible demonstrations of, of, of generative art and blockchain art. Yeah. 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 Very cool. Okay. Um, so uh, the reason we're here uh, speaking is because uh, in, in an interview with Eric, uh, I asked him what he thought was the future of NFT art. And he actually said, he said his exact quote was, he said, I'm really excited about the concept of generative manufacturing. Uh, he called it one of one of X manufacturing, where there's a direct production of a physical good associated with the creation of a generative object, which is just what we're talking about here. He said you were leading the way there. <laughs> um, in your experience, is the physical outputs um, in, really important to buyers? I mean, I think we, we discussed that a bit already. Mm -hmm. you, you said it is, right? Yeah. Um... I think it is. I think it is. Hmm. Um, maybe, maybe not enough to where everyone wants to go out and purchase a pen plotter hmm. um, and like devote a space in their home to having this this machine. Um, but we, we've also seen a, most artists that have released projects on plottables have offered collectors if they can prove ownership of the NFT, they will they will ship them uh, an artist plotted and signed version of their NFT. Um, we've seen a lot of people go that route instead of purchasing a pin plotter. Um, so yeah, I mean, the, the physicality is 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 
the whole point of the platform, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe maybe there's collectors that that aren't super interested in it, but um, I'm hoping I'm hoping to convince everyone of, that it's it's uh, it's uh, it's important and unique and um, it's what makes it exciting. Yeah, interesting. And I guess you have the code and you have the the design, let's call it. But then you have the you could you, I guess you could say the interpretation of that design and mm -hmm. and how it's actually plotted, which is then unique, another unique element, I guess. Right. That's another part of the platform is is allowing the the collector to to have some say in in what it looks like, um, right? So they can they can pick different colors, pick color pens, or use different color paper. Um, it's it's very important for me to to give give the collectors something more than just looking at the screen. Um, yeah. To be able to to take part in the process of of creating this piece of art. We're getting kind of philosophical then, I guess, this this idea of the physicality and, and bringing that out from the digital to the physical. Um, what what are what are have you seen you know any really exciting ways or, or other ways that people have um, brought these into the physical world? Actually, you mentioned one earlier. You said people taking two different uh, designs to different uh, NFTs. Mm -hmm. uh, that's super interesting. That's almost like the, uh, you know, when you think about the the, the breeding concept or, or whatever. Yeah. yeah, it's, yeah, so you're almost doing that. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that, you know, it's, it's only limited by imagination. Have you seen any other really interesting or different or groundbreaking ways that people have used plotters or even, even other types of, um, production methods maybe beyond plotters uh, Absolutely. What, what's your experience there what, what can you tell us um there's there's one person in our discord community that um, that has access to a a large laser cutter and a laser cutter takes the same files that a pin plotter takes so they've been laser cutting yeah. uh their their plottables work and it's it's incredible they um They'll laser cut it, and then they'll they'll like stain the wood. It's it's just incredibly beautiful, incredibly beautiful. Um, along along those lines, I've I've been uh, I'm in the early stages of talking with an artist um, who wants to create uh, a generative project that is meant to be laser cut um, with some plywood, and the idea would be that um, the output would actually be like. Like a sculptural puzzle, where where the laser cut would actually you know cut out these like pieces of wood, and they're meant to be like assembled into like this three D sculpture. Um, so that's that's like something that's that's super exciting to me and like really cutting edge. Um, otherwise, uh, we had a project that uh, was only for watercolors. Um, so, so we had an artist that that uh, developed this process to like like you said um, earlier, where uh, he would uh, con like command the robot to like refresh the paint and uh, and move the brush, um, and then like dip it in the water and then move it back to the paint and then move the paint paint a line again. Um, so yeah, I mean, th there's there's like there's no end to the the um, creativity that that people can apply to this. That's funny you mentioned that because I, I was thinking yesterday, I was thinking through this conversation and I, I have a friend of mine who, who, who runs like a small, a small factory in, in, I suppose you call it a factory workshop is probably a better word uh, in California where he has, I, I, I think also laser cutters, but it's for, it's for metals, for steel. Mm -hmm. And they create, um, I think uh, mainly industrial um, components. I know at one point they were they were creating some units for for testing iPhones and things that mm -hmm. the contract, but they, they would create these these three D. So it was not three D printing; it was kind of the opposite. They were cutting away, but it, but ending up with these three D three D objects in in steel mainly. And I was thinking about that. I was like, well, that 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 could be interesting also, right? To 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 apply something like this to that either on a two dimensional um, plot, I guess, but mm -hmm. potentially also three dimensional. Absolutely. I mean, that's mm -hmm. that's. Um... Uh, maybe maybe a year or two down the line, but but 
Yeah. Uh, if, if I could figure out how to control a 3D printer um, over USB, like the, the custom software I have to control the, the pin plotters, um, and uh, a generative 3D uh, printable platform sounds so exciting and, and incredible. For sure, no, it's uh, it it does. I can see it. So you because you referred earlier to the plotter just a moment ago as a robot. Uh, you said so. I mean, if you look at it that way, I guess also you know the, uh, you know you're limited by the imagination by of of the artist of the coder, but also then, uh, you're 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 depending on the robot. If if you want to use that word, then then also that that opens up a whole bunch of possibilities, right? If the plotter becomes, as you said, a three D printer or a laser cutter or something that we can't really imagine now, mm -hmm. then then there's a whole new world of possibilities there mm -hmm. as well, I guess. Absolutely. How do you think NFTs um, or you know the, the blockchain side of it, the NFTs uh, contribute uh, contribute to that? I'm just imagining this design and being able to replicate that uh, through a robot on a 2D or a 3D piece, mm -hmm. uh, and then you know is uh, obviously our NFTs necessary. But then I, I guess you could have ownership of that particular design, right? And then yeah, uh, that, that's a good yeah. point actually. So so part of the platform I mentioned, um, there's this interface where um, where you can pull up your NFT. And there's this um, this interface where where you can plug your your plotter into your computer and just click plot on the interface and it it will start plotting your NFT. Um, this interface is is you have to be signed into the wallet that owns the NFT to actually to actually use this interface. So there are some steps to sort of lock down the NFT to to the person that owns it. Um, of course, you know, the, the code's on chain. So if, if you're motivated enough, you can go and, and run the code and, and get the SVG and figure out how yeah. to communicate with the plotter. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I really did think it was important to, to preserve the, the uniqueness of the NFT and, and only give access to the owner, uh, to, to reproduce it. I also came across a quote from from Tyler Hobbs, uh, and actually, I, that's that's uh, what I was referencing earlier. He said, "He said plotters do have a learning curve at first, but he said the, the satisfaction of producing a real physical piece of artwork uh, makes it all worthwhile." And he said, "There are so many interesting things you can create with a plotter. Most of them haven't been discovered yet, and <laughs> if you experiment and try new techniques, you'll quickly find fertile new ground." Um, yeah, maybe we've covered it already, but uh, what do you think are the futures? Is the future of plotters? Um, do you have any idea what those things are that Tyler is talking about that haven't been discovered yet? Can you project yourself into the future? Uh, well, I can't. I can't speak for Tyler, but but I I have a couple ideas that that I would I would find interesting to to see done done well and executed well. Um, one the the one thing I have in my mind is um, to to have some sort of interaction with the plotter. So while the plotter is doing doing its work, um, have some instructions for the person watching it to to like physically interact with it. Maybe that's you know drawing on the paper at the same time that the plotter is drawing on the paper, or maybe it's it's moving the paper around uh, so that the plot gets a little distorted or something. Yeah. Or um, or. Yeah, this is this is a little more far fetched, but maybe maybe having some sensors built into the plotter where where you can interact with it, like it it can sense where you are, where you're looking, and it it can uh, maybe uh, you know try to try to chase your hand around or or react to to the expression on your face or something. What are your predictions? I guess for the well, the plotter space we just talked about, um, but you know you've developed uh well actually quickly uh, about that because you mentioned this at the beginning you said that uh i didn't realize that you said art blocks has this um service perhaps where you can develop your own marketplace is that how you developed uh plotables yeah um so oh gosh it must have been a year ago i was listening to to snowfro um talk about talk about the future of art blocks and and mm. sort of where you saw this was in the very early days so there was like there was like 50 people in the discord uh, voice chat listening um, and he he mentioned very briefly powered by art blocks mm. um, and the first thing that came to my mind was oh let's let's make a, a powered by art blocks platform for for pen plotter 
print pen plottable art. Um, and I messaged him and I said, Hey, you know, does that sound interesting? Um, and he was super supportive and, and really interested. Um, it just took, it took them some, some time to figure out how to like make all of that happen on their side. Um, so during that time I was sort of developing the platform and sort of what I thought it would look like and how it would work. And, um, Eventually, he he reached out and said, "Hey, you know, I think we're getting close. We we might be ready." Uh, this was maybe four four or five months later, and um, and yeah, uh, pretty quickly because because I had been working on it for for a while, uh, we were able to get it up. They they deployed the smart contracts for me, which was great, um, and they also the main thing they provide is the backend rendering. So when somebody mints. Uh, a plottables token, it uses the same technology to capture a screenshot of the NFT uh, running live in the browser. And then uh, they also serve that. Um, so I can I can pull in the the uh, image and uh, show it on the website. Oh, OK, great. Good. So you got that, uh, you got that, that reveal moment, I guess. Exactly. Are there other platforms like yours, or are you you were the first? I guess from what you're saying, that, that... Um, I was not the first. I think I was maybe hmm. maybe the second. Um, hmm. I think the first one, Doodle Labs. Doodle Labs. Yeah. Okay. Um, I... They they are building. I mean, I don't I don't want to speak for them, but the way hmm. I understand their platform is they're they're building a, um, a Power by Arc Blocks platform for. Um, collaborations between brands and artists. Um, so, for example, uh, one of the one of the projects they did was a collaboration with um, with White Castle, uh, which is like a, a burger chain, uh, and a generative artist who like made um, generative burgers <laughs> as the NFT <laughs> okay. uh, called Slider Reverse. But uh, yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> what are your predictions for NFTs and for blockchain art generally? I mean, for plotters as well, but but let's let's go beyond um, for NFTs and blockchain art, and let's say the coming one year and the coming five years. That's a great question. I mean, I can I can say what what I hope happens. I, th I hope more people like come to the space. Um, yeah. I hope more people begin to understand it. I know certainly like a lot of my friends and my parents. Uh, like just have no idea what's happening and and why it's why it's important and i'm probably not the best person to explain it to them um but i hope that something happens that that allows them to to see why this is so exciting and such a such a great technology um i think that's the biggest thing for me i agree and you know within m house that's part of our goal as well is to you know onboard or introduce as many people as we can to the world of blockchain art and try to try to tell the story uh, a little bit as well uh, or not a little bit uh, a lot uh, tell the story of blockchain art and why it's significant and why we think it's important and why we think it's here to stay and why it's why it's cool because it is it is cool but you know change takes time not everybody gets it in the beginning and but the I think most people will will get it in the end. Is there anything else you'd like to talk about? I mean, I, I think it's been a super interesting conversation. I've learned a lot, and uh, I've also got some inspiration now to potentially or maybe probably place a plotter in our IRL uh, gallery to let people have that physical to digital experience themselves. Uh, where can people find out more about you and about Plottables? If they yeah, so, so me, uh, I go by Numbers in Motion. Um, I'm on Instagram. Numbers and motion or numbers in motion? Sorry, numbers in motion. Yep. Uh, no no spaces, no no underscores or anything. Uh, numbers in motion. Uh, you can find me on Instagram as that. On Twitter, I'm nums in motion. Uh, numbers in motion. For plottables, you can check out plottables.io. That's P-L-O-T-T-A-B-L-E-S dot I-O. Um, we also have a great Discord community. Uh, people sharing sharing their plots uh, all the time, and uh, you can reach the artists as well. Um, I think there's a link to that on the website. You can also find the Plottables social media um, on Twitter. That is at Plottables.io. Uh, on Instagram, I think it's just Plottables. 
plottables.io. It's plottables.io. But yeah, c- come by Discord, say hi. Um, yeah. I will uh, definitely join your Discord as well. Uh, I guess I need to get up to speed now on uh, plotters and, and how they work <laughs> and where to get uh, uh, NFT content. If you have any questions, um, there's, there's some really smart people in the Discord that, that are always happy to help. Excellent. That's that's very cool. Very cool. Okay, thanks. And uh, I guess last question, because Eric said uh, Eric mentioned you, and and here we are talking about plotters, and I've learned a lot. It's great. Uh, is there anybody that you think that we should speak to next? Doesn't have to be in plotables. Doesn't even have to be in generative art. Uh, the M talks we call it Meet the Innovators. Uh, it's based around Web three and NFTs, uh, obviously. Um, who do you think the people should? hear about maybe somebody well known maybe somebody not so well known um, i think one of the one of the more interesting people or, or groups that are are working in in nfts especially like in person and like physical not not quite physical but like in person uh, events uh, would be bright mm-hmm. moments um, they they do they have some like physical galleries um, in different mm-hmm. cities i think they're opening one in berlin soon um, and their whole thing is they, you can only uh, mint things on their platform in person. So nice. you have to come there and they, they will, um, you have to you know, connect your wallet and they'll send you a token. Um, and then you use that token to redeem your mint. And it can only be that night in person. Um, and they, they do a lot of fun things with like revealing the mint. Um, so I think for an event in, in LA, they, uh, there was like you, you would like get a massage and and, and you'd had to like meditate or something uh, before the the NFT was revealed uh, and and the NFT like came with some generative music and it was very soothing and um, yeah they're just having a lot of fun and, and doing some really cool stuff. Hmm. Okay, I love that idea and that sounds like perfect uh, group for us to speak with. So thanks. Uh, that's bright bright moments. Yeah. Bright moments. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, great. Uh, we'll reach out them. Well, thank you very much. I, I just want to say this is really interesting. Uh, it's an area I didn't know much about. As I said, I've got inspiration to uh, to get a plotter for the gallery uh, and bright moments uh, would be certainly uh, sounds interesting people to speak to as well. Uh, so Matt Jacobson from Plottables, I just want to say a huge thank you on behalf of uh, M House and M Talks. Really appreciate you doing this. And uh, wish you every success with Plottables and with uh, generative art and NFT and blockchain art generally. Thank you so much, and and thank you so much for having me.